No. Come on, him? I like him. The Quicker Picker Upper. Bounty picks up messes quicker and is two times more absorbent so you can use less. Bounty, the Quicker Picker Upper. Who says you have to spend more on skincare to get results? I power up my skin with Olay. It works. Guaranteed. Try niacinamide for strength, retinol 24 for smoothness, and vitamin C for brightness. I like to use them all. Olay. Face anything. You got spunk. <laughs> well, yes. I hate spunk. <laughs> From Mary Tyler Moore to The Sopranos, we count down the best TV shows of all time. Ooh, I know I have my list. Come on. I definitely do. Okay, we leave oh. you now with a holiday classic that continues to be recreated year after year, The Nutcracker. Enjoy. Good night, everybody. The ballet premiered 130 years ago. Happening now. The Bear County Sheriff's Office tells us they found a human skull here in Southwest Bear County. Sheriff Javier Salazar tells us it could take a long time to find out who those remains belong to. And another hard freeze is expected tonight and tomorrow night, but the afternoons are looking a bit better. We'll time out your holiday weekend forecast in a few. It's just two days to Christmas. You done your shopping yet? If not, don't worry. Well, you're in good company. We talk with a few of your fellow last minute shoppers. First at five, an unexpected discovery on a property in Southwest Bear County. The Bear County Sheriff's Office says that a human skull was discovered in a wooded area on a property off of Loop 1604 near Pew Road. Camelia Juarez was at that property this afternoon and tells us what the Sheriff's Office hopes will help them figure out who this person was and what happened to them. A human skull, but no other clues. It's what turned up in Southwest Bear County when Thursday night, someone driving down 1604 lost some cargo on Cerro Medina. If you walk straight into the woods from there, that's where it is, probably about, I'd say 100 yards in. The person who found the skull called law enforcement. The Bear County Sheriff's Office has been searching, but so far, no other human remains have been found in the area. There was really nothing else of, of evidentiary value that was found last night. Today, search crews are using cadaver dogs and dozens of trained volunteers to find more clues. We're telling our folks to look out for, you know, other other bones, anything that looks like a shallow grave, uh, any jewelry, any clothing. Anything that looks like it might be of evidentiary value uh, to let us know and we can collect it. Homicide detectives told Salazar the skull looks like it has been exposed for a long time, even a couple years. The area was recently developed into a subdivision. It looks like the skull has been sitting out here for a while. It is possible that the, the person died right there and the, the bones were scattered elsewhere by animals or you know, heavy rains, maybe the, they kind of sunk into the ground. That's one of the things that we're looking for. Or it's possible that they died elsewhere and that skull may have been carried here by something like a coyote or a dog. For now, the skull is with the Bear County Medical Examiner's Office, which says it could take some time to identify it. Sheriff Javier Salazar says they do have some clues. The teeth in the skull, they'll compare those teeth to dental records of missing people. Reporting in Southwest Bear County, Camalia Juarez, Quesa 12 News. And hopefully they get an answer. You know, you often hear stories about investigators trying to identify remains whenever we cover stories like this, but it's a challenge. And if you scan this QR code, you can get a better understanding as to how it's done. The KSAT Explains team got a rare look inside the Bear County Medical Examiner's Office and found out how they identify remains when there are few clues to go on. And that story, by the way, is on demand right now. New at five, that Arctic blast uh, came in yesterday, causing a ton of issues for Saws customers today. The utility reporting it has received more than a thousand calls about frozen pipes today. And here's the thing with the freezing temperatures sticking around tonight. They really want to get ahead of that issue. Saws is reminding people to keep one faucet running with a slow drip to keep the water moving through the pipes. And if your home has plumbing in cabinets on outside walls without insulation, they want you to go ahead and keep those cabinet doors open. Also, cover and insulate those outdoor pipes and turn off your irrigation system. With more on tonight's forecast, let's 
turn to meteorologist Mia Montgomery. Yep, another hard freeze expected not just tonight, but also as we head into Saturday night. The good news is, though, into the afternoons by tomorrow, plenty of sunshine helping those temperatures climb well above freezing across the vast majority of south central Texas. That wasn't the case this afternoon. In some spots, we weren't able to reach or climb above that 32 degree mark. Lakey, though, earlier this afternoon, just a degree above it, 30 33 in our far western counties, a little bit warmer. 38 in Del Rio and 37 over in Eagle Pass. 29 in Bull Verde, 32 in Lavernia, 31 just up the road in New Braunfels. Even if your temperatures were able to briefly climb above that 32 degree mark, that will not last for long, especially after the sun goes down. Those temperatures are going to fall quickly yet again. Evening plans in the 20s. And again, as we head into the overnight hours, we are expecting teens and 20s. Once again, the good news is wind chill values won't be as low as what we saw earlier this morning. But with all of that sunshine, those temperatures climb to about 40 degrees tomorrow afternoon. So we're starting that thawing out process. But yet another hard freeze expected for your Christmas morning. Again, into next week, though, we are expecting that warming trend to take place. We'll have a full look at the holiday weekend as well as what we can expect with that warming trend in just a few guys. Thank you, Mia. And just a reminder for people who need a warm place to go during this cold weather, there are seven warming centers across the city and county, and V is offering free rights to anybody who needs help getting to one. Just remember to bring your own medications, clothes, and also supplies. By the way, Bernie also has a warming center open until Monday. It's at the Patrick Health Public Library. And the city of Lytle has a warming center at the Lytle Community Center. Now, just a reminder here, this is not an overnight center. It's open from 6 to 8 o'clock tonight. It's a lot of information that we just explained, but don't worry, we have it all for you on our website, ksat.com. And things on this map right now on your screen, it's the outage map that the Bandera Electric Cooperative uh, had out there and is looking a lot better right now than it did just a few hours ago. Many folks in the co-op's coverage area found themselves in rolling outages today after an equipment failure at the Medina Lake substation early this morning. John Palladino with the BEC says they tried moving those affected over to some other substations, but the high demand due to the weather made that a bit challenging. It made it very problematic to shift those number of homes to a different substation. And so when we tried to shift that load, other equipment along the line that kind of upstream from there started tripping out because it became overloaded. Now, Patalino says uh, they got that equipment repaired about one o'clock this afternoon and those impacted were back online about an hour later. All right, now we're going to take things outside just to give you a live look at what the traffic situation is like. This is Loop 410 at Jackson Keller, and you can see that one of those uh, lanes right there, one of those sides is just fine. The other one's going pretty slow at this hour. So if you have any of those GPS apps or anything like that, just make sure you use that so that you could find a way to go around this if you do happen to uh, cross 410 at Jackson Keller. Good luck. Sticking with traveling, another day closer to Christmas now and another day of flight issues at airports across the country. San Antonio International, no exception. More than 4,000 flights have been canceled today across the U.S. And for many people traveling through San Antonio International, it means buckling down, sitting tight, and packing an awful lot of patience. It's a lesson the Funk family learned early this morning while trying to ditch the cold weather for Hawaii. We're going from here to Denver, and Denver's our problem area. I'm just going with the flow right now, kind of being like, it will happen when it happens. This winter blast has just thrown everything out. Roll with the punches, mm -hmm. and it's not just flights that are being impacted, of course. If you're waiting for any holiday packages to arrive, you might also want to sit tight. Both FedEx and UPS are having some issues getting those packages to their destinations on time. All right, you mentioned packages, right? Yeah. This is also the retail rush, but whether your package is going to be late or you waited until now to shop, the weather just hasn't really made it appealing at all. Yeah, but Garrett Berger is live at Ingram Park Mall tonight where he found plenty of people trying to wrap up their holiday shopping today. 
Absolutely, and not just the adults. The kids are getting their last-minute shopping in Fry, asking the big man for something good. Now, we can only hope that there's enough time for Santa's Workshop to crank out all those requests because otherwise they are ending up on somebody's shopping list. Now, the number of shoppers has continued to climb through the day, coming from near and apparently far. A pair of shoppers from Brownsville said they were on a multi-day shopping trip here in San Antonio, starting yesterday with a full list, but this morning, down to the last two people. It's a little stressful. I mean, these people did their shopping on time, so you know, some says we, we were stuck with the leftovers and it's hard finding our sizes and stuff like that. But, uh, but so far we've been kind of lucky. Now he also noted that the run up to Christmas doesn't seem to be nearly as exciting or relaxing as he was when he was a kid and he didn't have to do all this shopping. I feel you on that, buddy. Now he was hoping things might become a little bit more chill once the holiday is done. But for now, we are surrounded by shoppers ready to finish out their list. I'll bring you more of our mall stories later tonight at 6 o'clock. In the meantime, I'm going to go check out the food court. Uh, fingers crossed that they've got some hot cocoa, whipped cream only. Otherwise, may as well go without, right? Live at Ingram Park Mall, I'm Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. Or marshmallows. Come on, Garrett. All right, thank you. Now to a recaller. Do you or anyone you know own a Samsung washing machine? Because the company is recalling hundreds of thousands of those top load machines because of a fire hazard. Samsung is saying the washers can short circuit and overheat. And people reported more than 50 in instances where the machines melted, overheated, smoked, or even sparked fires. Now, the good news is there is a repair that's available. You can go to Samsung.com to find out more. But until then, you're being asked to stop using the machines. We have some new details now about a fatal crash on the west side that happened last night. We have now learned that person who died is an eight-year-old girl. According to San Antonio police, that girl was a passenger in the backseat of a Dodge Journey that lost control, took out a fire hydrant before hitting another driver and then crashing into a telephone pole. The eight-year-old died at the scene. The driver was taken to the hospital. Officers believe she may have been driving drunk. She's now facing charges of uh, intoxication manslaughter. Now, besides COVID and the flu, families gathering for the holidays have another big health concern. The CDC now warning of a rare but severe infection known as invasive group A strep. Two children in Colorado have already passed away from it. ABC's Zoreen Shah has the story. Just hours now from Christmas Eve, the CDC is warning Americans of a rare but invasive type of strep A. Two children in Colorado have already passed away from the bacterial infection. Fevers, chills, muscle aches, new rashes that might be warm or tender to touch, painful joints. Some kids can even have altered mental status or they can appear more sleepy than usual. This comes as families need to be cautious of multiple viral illnesses. It's not just a COVID problem. We're, we're dealing with COVID, the flu, RSV, but also other respiratory issues that we get normally at this time of the year. All of those illnesses leading to empty shelves in some places with certain pharmacies now putting a cap on how many medications you can purchase at one time. The White House weighing in. They say they're making a national strategic stockpile of Tamiflu, the antiviral prescription drug available to states that are low. Being able to unlock that stockpile and provide states with access to these medications is especially important as we're dealing with one of the worst flu seasons in memory. The good news is there are no official nationwide shortages of medications, but there are reports of empty shelves in some places, and that's why we see the Biden administration unlocking that stockpile. Zoreen Shah, ABC News, Los Angeles. So look, I'm at five. What's on your Christmas menu? From turkey to tamales, dinner just isn't complete without a cocktail. Up next, bring out the shakers because we've got cocktail recipes for everyone. I'm Myra Arthur here in the newsroom with a look at a story we're working on for the news at six. This one could affect a lot of people. You might be ready for the holiday weekend, but what about your car? The cold weather can cause issues for vehicles, and the last thing you want is a car that won't start. So we're talking about what you can do to make sure your engine keeps on running during these freezing temperatures. All the preps, not just for the house, the plants, and the pipes. That story and more today on the News at 6.
Looking forward to that, Myra. All right, so it's the season for holiday parties and also cocktails, and now you can get ready-made cocktails like Cosmos and Mojitos from a can. But, yeah, I know what you're thinking. How do they taste, and would you even want to serve them to your guests? Well, 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz has your holiday help. If your party calls for cocktails, here's a time saver cocktail in a can. One of the better things about canned cocktails is that they allow you to focus on your guests and not on preparing your cocktails yourself. So how does canning something that's meant to be served fresh from the bar really taste? A lot of cocktails work really well in cans, but one thing you have to look out for is that it's very hard to can fresh citrus juice or fresh fruit juice. They're gonna be their own thing. For example, Tester said this Bacardi Mojito doesn't exactly taste like a mojito, but it was still a surprise hit, tasting like spiked Sprite. If that's too sweet, Tester said this Cutwater Tequila Paloma is also refreshing, slightly citrusy and reasonably priced, making it a good party pick. If you want to play bartender and save money, you'll need a cocktail shaker. Beginners gravitate toward the cobbler style. It has three parts, a shaker, a strainer, and a cap that doubles as a one-ounce measuring cup. Pros prefer Boston-style shakers, just two parts. This stainless steel one from Crate & Barrel is easy to use, dishwasher safe, and costs 20 bucks. You'll need to buy a Hawthorne strainer separately. Cheers! Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. You might want to find yourself a warm cocktail if you're heading out here tonight. Yes. The uh, lights over there at the Botanical Gardens. Another chilly night ahead. I was going to go there with my family last night. We wisely decided after having dinner that was a no-go. And look, even right now, 516, 31 degrees out there right now. And I got to say, it is beautiful. It, it is. beautiful out there when you're walking around. Absolutely. But OMG, if you want to do that tonight, bundle up. That's the thing. I was looking at our live cam earlier and just looking outside, it was sunny. If you didn't yes. walk outside, you would think it was just a beautiful day. But once you did step outdoors, yes, you were instantly reminded just how cold it is across South Central Texas. We've had that Arctic air mass that is officially settled in. Let's take a look at some of the lows that we found out there earlier this morning. Check this out. We got down to 16 degrees officially over at San Antonio International. 12 degrees up in Kerrville. 18 was the wake up temperature over in Uvalde. 17 in Hondo and 20 down in Pleasanton. But of course, when you factored in that gusty north wind we still had in place, those feels like temperatures and wind chill values were down in the single digits and even in spots below zero. So it has been a cold, cold day from start to finish. And you can see as we take a look at our current conditions outside, winds are starting to come down just a little bit. We are at 32 degrees officially over at the airport here at this 5 p.m. hour. Four places in pink at or below freezing. 31 in Converse. It's 29 in Bulverde. 30 in Comfort and 29 over in Lost Maple. Stinson on the south side of Bear County, just one degree above that freezing threshold. Probably not going to last for long, though, especially now that the sun is about to go down. But you can see our winds, yes, are starting to calm down. And that's good news when we compare the feels like temperature forecast for tomorrow morning compared to what we saw out there earlier this morning. Still plenty cold, but because the winds are not going to be as healthy and as strong, those winds values not as bad as what we saw earlier today. But yes, we are still expecting a hard freeze yet again across the vast majority of our area. We've got a forecast low here in San Antonio around 17 degrees, 21 in Floresville, 17 in Sabinal, 19 in Holotus as we wake up on Christmas Eve. So yet again, I know you don't need me to tell you this because we've been talking about it all week long, but we do need to take all of those hard freeze preparations again, same ones that you took last night, bringing the pets indoors, of course, the potted plants still covering up your tender and sensitive vegetation, protecting the pipes, turning off sprinkler systems. That's a big one. And of course, checking on the elderly, just making sure that your friends and neighbors are staying as warm as possible. As we head into your Christmas Eve, plenty of sunshine will once again be the name of the game, helping those afternoon temperatures warm a bit more than what we found out there today.
today. How about upper 30s and low 40s tomorrow afternoon? So above freezing around 41 degrees is that forecast high temperature here in town by tomorrow into our Christmas day. Yet another hard freeze is expected, but other than the cold, Santa shouldn't have any issues making his way down here to South Central Texas. Plus he's used to the cold right up in the North Pole. More sunshine will be the theme for your Christmas day. Temperatures even warmer by Sunday afternoon near about 50 degrees. Now as we head into next week, that warming trend is going to take place not just for our morning lows, but also into our daytime highs as well in the low 60s by Tuesday. How about some 70s into the second half of next week? And then we'll introduce a few isolated chances for rain by Thursday and Friday, guys. All right, Mia, thank you. All right, Greg, uh, one of the Spurs' very young guns had himself a night. Yeah, you were talking about Jeremy So and the number one pick overall. Yes, he had a great night. Unfortunately for the team, they did not pick up the victory when we come back. They lost last night in New Orleans. They're in Orlando tonight where they're going to tip off in just over 30 minutes from now. We'll talk about last night's game first, of course, and pop on his Hall of Fame nomination. Coming up. Our San Antonio Spurs have been unable to beat the New Orleans Pelicans this season. 0-3 after they fell last night on the road in New Orleans, and that's without both Zion Williamson and Brandon Ingram in the lineup for New Orleans. The Spurs were missing Keldon Johnson for the second straight game with tightness in his right hamstring, but usually others step up. The Spurs struggle with their shooting all night long, starting in the first quarter where they were outscored 37-17 behind C.J. McCollum's hot hand, scoring three straight three-pointers to open the game. But the Spurs' lone bright spot was Jeremy Sohan, who was able to score 12 points in the second quarter, already had a season high by halftime at 15, even though the Spurs trailed 65-46 at the break. The Pelicans would lead by as many as 23, but then the Spurs go on a 10-0 run in the fourth quarter, fueled by Stanley Johnson, who had nine of his 12 points in the final period. They cut the lead down to nine, but McCollum slammed the door closed, finishing with a season-high 40 points, including seven three-pointers in the 126-117 route. Yeah, I think it's just becoming more comfortable and, you know, more confident. Um, I play with a lot of energy and, you know, when, once st things slow down, it's, it's a lot easier. So, um, yeah, maybe I had a career high, but. Uh all right, before tip-off, Spurs head coach Greg Popovich was asked about being a Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame candidate, along with former Spurs Tony Parker and Paul Gasol for the very first time. Pop is eligible since he's been the head coach of the Spurs for over 25 years, even though he's still active. To be nominated for something like that with any group <laughs> is pretty flattering and pretty amazing so you know those those guys are wonderful that's for sure but uh, it's not something you you think about growing up or uh, while you're coaching it's not something that you aspire to you know it's it's out of the realm of possibility you just sort of do your job and uh, it's it's not top of mind that's for sure all right, let's take a look at tonight's matchup, 6 o'clock, in just a matter of minutes. Highlights for you tonight on the Night Beat. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Dallas Cowboys rookie linebacker Sam Williams was taken on the hospital on Thursday after he was involved in a two-vehicle crash in Plano. Police say the accident occurred on Highway 121 in Preston Road, where Williams' Corvette was mangled by another vehicle attempting a left-hand turn. Williams tweeted out, I'm okay, so is the other person that was involved. But you look at the remnants of that accident right there. Mm -hmm. He is lucky he was not more seriously injured. Yeah, that car was ravaged. That did not look good. The car is not okay. No, the car is not good. <laughs> no. Thanks, Greg. We'll be right back after this. All right, a few more hard freezes still in the cards for South Central Texas, starting off with tonight with plenty of sunshine. We'll have those temperatures climbing into the upper 30s and low 40s tomorrow afternoon. Another freeze expected Christmas morning, but then as we head into next week, that warming trend will take place. Good news is with that sunshine, no travel issues on the roadways here in the Lone Star State, guys. Okay, that's something. Thank you, and thank you for watching the News at 5. World News is next. We'll see you back here in 6.